one of which is a die-hard Brisbane Lions fan. I did tell you about him. He's copped the drive all the way up from QLD. It is, of course, Ben from Supercoach Insider. Come on up. Thank you for having me. And someone who hasn't had to travel as far, but still, we acknowledge it. We've got Paul from the Hoops crew. Come on up, Paulie. Oh, up again. Oh. I, I, lost my, I lost my beer down here somewhere. I've had to make you get up twice, mate. Don't know where it's gone. Can I get another beer, please? Oh, I'll share one with Blackie, it's fair enough. You don't have a beer? No, I just dropped it. Courtesy of Tradie Beer. Thank dropped you so it. much, Tradie Beer, for providing us with the beers tonight. A massive thank you to Sportscast as well. Thank you so much for providing us with the incredible footage, the incredible cameras. Lock and load, thank you so much for helping us set up. It looks Great absolutely beer. incredible. A bolo, another, sh another, another shot. We're thanking you again and the St Kilda Sports Club for everything that's going on here as well. And of course, Banff Pizza, who have been enjoying the pizza of so much. Well, I reckon we should throw to these guys. You've got the great Simon Black here. What questions have you got for him? I've got one first. Who thought to put the Geelong sport with two Brisbane blokes? Sorry, not sorry. Rough. <laughs> you know I love you, Paulie. <laughs> We already had to kick out one Geelong supporter, so... <laughs> uh, my question is, so we had uh, Fagan got coach of the year, and this comes from my friend Stuart here on the long drive down from Brisbane. Out of all of your former teammates, who would be the best of the rest as far as coaches? So you have the Scott brothers, Vossi, Lepper. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd love to Fly. see... Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously Fly. So the nine guys are going to got an opportunity to see you coach. I'd say Luke Power or, or Nigel Lappin. I'd love to see those guys get an opportunity. I think as far as modern day coaches goes, they, they tick a lot of, a lot of the, the attributes required. Uh, yeah, so I'd love to see Luke Power or Nigel Lappin get a, get a crack. Talking about coaches, what was it like having an amazing skipper in, in Michael Voss and then him becoming your coach a bit later in his in the career? What was that transition like for you? Was it easy or was it a different relationship dynamic? It was, uh, I mean, when I play with Vossi Coach, I mean, he was like my hero. He was just this battering ram and super skillful, what a leader he was. You know, I'm sure a lot of you guys in the room understand what, what, what amazing player that, that guy was. Um, so, you know, he was a few years my senior and I, I just like playing next alongside your hero. It was, it was unreal. Um, so he taught me so much. I wanted to be an inside mid midfielder at the age of 17, 18 and he took me under, my wing, under his wing and, and just taught me the ropes, I guess. So... Um, uh, that, that was amazing, um, and just his 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 genuine care. And I, I guess you know the when, when you play football in the northern states in Brisbane, you know eighty percent of your playing list is from interstate. And so unless you have a really strong, tight knit playing group, a lot of the guys go home. Um, and, and it's advantageous when you when you in some respects when you come to Queensland because you you don't have family and friends around. Um, so you spend a lot of time together as a playing group. And if you get it right. You know, it, it really is. Excuse me, my phone's That's Vossy now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Vossy. It is a burning. Vossy, wondering why was it number one That's on right. your list? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, um, coach, I forget your question. To be honest, what was it like from uh, captain to Vossy then being your coach? Uh, coach? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Look, we, we, we saw the game in, in, in a similar light. Um, you know, there, there wasn't much, many times besides when we got Fev to the club that I thought he'd really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we're on similar, similar um, beliefs in a lot of ways, but, um, you know, we, we were, as a footy club after 04, 05, we, we really shot ourselves in the, club, in the foot as a, as a club ourselves. Forget about the AFL. We, we really screwed it up ourselves, but um, that's why it's been so great the last four or five years to get ourselves back on track and, and um, give ourselves a crack at it. You've mentioned, you know, back when we had Dutchie on, about the importance of being able to take your moment, you know, w w making hay, is what you said. You had four opportunities back to back to back. Now, not many people sort of have that opportunity to be able to have so many opportunities at the same time. 
what did it feel like? You know, did, did that sense of the moment diminish after being in the same situation four years in a row? Is that sort of what led to maybe the 04 loss? Uh, look, I mean, it, it takes a lot from it takes a lot to get there uh, to a grand final. It's not just you know 2024 that season. It takes years to build. I mean, for the Lions and for the Swans. They've both lost the grand final the last two years. So there's a lot of heartache that goes with that. Um, and, and it really is around the connection piece. You know, like our game's a really tough game to play. And in big 100,000 people, big games, big moments, um, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot that's required physically from our game. And, um, you know, to, to give you an example, to, you know, what, what takes courage in our game? T courage in our game takes courage to go back with the flight of the ball when you, 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 you know you don't know what's coming the other way Johnny Brown <laughs> Brownie you know 300 kilo blokes come at 20k an hour the other way I mean that takes a bit of courage um, and so when you've got that brotherhood that connection when the ball goes in the air and, and I hear Vossi say Blackie you gotta go you gotta go it's yours like th there's a split decision that you've got to make the decision to go or not and when you've got that connection that brotherhood that genuine love for each other that's 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 the goal. That's the goal piece. And um, for for our club at that era, we had we had guys that were willing to put their body on the line and do whatever was required. And and, and that's that's the the goal uh, ingredients, I guess, that separates teams. What about choosing a favourite amongst those those premierships along the way? Now we've walked a very similar path. I won three junior premierships compared to back to back, right? <laughs> Under 13s, 14s, 15s, golden days. I won a junior uh, debating yeah. competition. Congrats. <laughs> Masturbator extraordinaire. <laughs> Masturbator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Joe. But picking the picking the favourite. Is there a favourite? How do you determine like what factors go into it? How do you work through that in your mind? So, sorry, of the premierships. Of, of the premierships. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they all do a bit different. The first one was, you know, the first one so euphoric, was so special. We got up against Essendon, who were an amazing side at the time, so dominant. Uh, so that was just probably the best of the three because it was the first. Uh, we all, you know, as the age of nine, you, you, you aspirational to, to play on the stage and, and win it. So it was amazing. 0-2, uh, uh, we were the red-hot favourites and we only just won against Collingwood. So that was more, I guess, of a, a relief feeling. And then, excuse me, 0-3 uh, was, was just fun. I mean, the, 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 the poor old magpies didn't really show up that day. They... Um, they beat us a, a few weeks earlier in the, in, the, in the first week of the finals, as we said earlier, and, and they didn't have their, you know, their best day on grand final day. So to get out to a big lead early in the game was, was just fun, and to enjoy it the last quarter was, was unreal. And I guess, just as a Geelong supporter, I also just wanted to pick your mind a little bit. So 2004, obviously, there was a bit of controversy around the prelim and kind of the nature of that one as well. You hear a little bit of conversation about, I guess, some of the inner thoughts and rumblings for you as a player at the time. What was going through your mind having to play, like, earn the home final, but then ultimately have to play it at the, at the G? Uh, yeah, you know, you're sort of in warrior, warrior mode when you're playing. You, you just, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever. Anywhere, was, anytime. Yeah, do what was required any, anywhere, anytime. So, um, yeah, we, I mean, we will beat up. There's no doubt. And this is why you kind of, the teams that, the teams that get there for several years, and, and the Lions are one, you know, they've been there about the last few years and they haven't been able to win it. So you've got to make, you've got to make hay when you've got the good group, you know, and, and that's just why it's a big, big, big day tomorrow for both clubs because they've been there for, for, for a number of years now and, You've got to take the opportunity. So, um, yeah, for us in 04, I mean, we'll, just, we'll look back. And for me personally, I'll probably think so much about 04 as much as the mm. three years we won because we, we learn more from our losses than we, our wins in life, don't we, often. So that hurts a lot. Um, we would have been pretty special to win four in a row. We probably could have said we were the greatest team of all time. But um, now it's pretty fair debatable. argument regardless, right? What, sorry? Pretty fair argument regardless. I agree, yes. Well, I mean, yeah, when we, Hawthorne won three in a row a few years after us, really, so... Uh, yeah. I blame the people that retired um, before the fourth round. Um, Joe, I'm, I'm glad you had some of the top four commentary here, but um, I thought it was the top two premiership quarters. Thanks for Geelong for sticking around a little bit for the seven days. I uh, really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, this is the reason why we set it up this way. Um, uh, I've been told if you can just put the microphone close to your mouth, Simon. Uh, yep. How happy were you when that extra disposal that Christian Petrarca had was taken <laughs> off him and you alone stand atop <laughs> now still in the grand final uh, possession count? No, no, Jay. I, I, look, I was attuned to it. I know what was going on. He, he had 40 and they took it off him to, to equal mine at 39. So <laughs> he, threw, he must have thrown the ball or something. But no, look, at that. that was an amazing performance over in Perth uh, for... for 
for the track. Uh, but uh, yeah, look, it's, yeah, it's, I guess it's nice to have the equal disposals or whatever, but it's far nicer to one three in a row than to have that record, yeah. Now, yeah, as a coach, Blackie, you had one of the greatest of all time in Lethal. What was he like as, as, a, as a leader of men? I mean, we all know about If It Bleeds, You Can Kill It, which was the instigator for that uh, great win against the Bombers in, in 2001 that ultimately led to the flag. But can you give us any other stories and insight into the man? How good is the coach's voice, the golden tonsils of the coach? <laughs> I, I can uh, listen to him all night. Thanks, <laughs> mate. Can, can fun, I... fun fact, though, is that Lethal's actually at the Alex Hills Bombers at the moment up in oh. Redlands there, inspiring some of the younger generations, there the green go. kids to come. So is shout he, out to Alex Hills Bombers. Is he not down here in, in Melbourne tonight? I don't know about tonight. I'm talking about in previous weeks okay. for junior footy. Right, yeah. I'd be disappointed if Lethal's not in Melbourne tonight. I'm sure he is. <laughs> Oh, I mean, Lee Coach was an amazing guy. Obviously, as soon as so, so my first year, we came last. Uh, the, the coach John Orley, unfortunately, got sacked uh, halfway through the year. And who's going to be our coach? Who's going to be our coach? And then all of a sudden, it's Lee Matthews. And and, and when he when he walked in, he as I'm sure a lot of you know, regarded as the best player of the last century, best player in the history of the game. Blah blah, whatever whatever you know, everyone's opinion is. Um, he, he had presence about him, and but but more, more than that, I guess when you come last, there, there, there's no doubt there's a bit of a selfishness um, um, uh, mentality about the about the organisation. We probably had that, and I, as an 18 year old, I, I didn't really understand. You know, I was just happy to play a few games. It was it was cool, but looking back on reflection, Lee came in and said, "Boys, I, I tell you one thing." I said, "He said I'll, I'll have a I'll, I'll be here in three years' time. I've got a three year contract, but I'm not sure how many of you guys will be here in three years' time." But that said, I'll judge you from today going forward. You know, I might have heard this, that and the other um, based on the year that's gone by, but you'll be judged from here going forward. So for us as a playing group, that was really a big relief, um, you know, and it was an opportunity to have a clean slate and for guys to actually start to build their reputation and their, um, their perception from, their, from that day going forward. Uh, Lee, Lee was Lee's like a lot of our great teachers and great coaches, or from that we remember from our childhood. Um, Lee had a great ability to simplify a message, um, provide a great clarity for the for the 22 guys that run out every week, um, and didn't over overcomplicate the the, the message. Um, and his old mantra was around "Know your role, accept your role, and perform your role," which which has been bandied about a lot over the years. And he was wonderful at it. So. Uh, yeah, a wonderful guy. You knew he was in his corner at half time when you're down the scoreboard and he comes, you go into the sheds and, and Lee's coming to address you. you. You just got an air of confidence and you got your swagger back because Lee Matthews is talking to us. Oh, if great. he says do it this way, then you bloody did it that way. And, and it, was, it was a powerful thing and it was a, for a kid coming from Perth, it was an incredible, incredible honour and privilege to, to be under the tutelage of a guy like Lee Matthews. And is that sort of what also helped to drive? Because you also were an assistant coach as well after you, after you finished up. Did, did that sort of experience also help you find that passion for coaching as well? Yeah, yeah it did. And, and for, for us, you know, any walk of life, any organisation, it takes years to build. And you know, I remember hearing Robert Walls, um, he came and spoke to us as a playing group, you know, well after our premiership era. And he spoke about how... Um, and maybe I'm not right in this, but he spoke about Ron Barassi might have been his coach and how the messaging from Ron Barassi went to him, uh, maybe to someone else, and then to, and then to, um, to Robert Wars and how, how it passed down the chain. And for, for, for Lee... Through me as well, Blackie. Through you, coach, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, yeah. you, you, <laughs> you wrote the playbook. Yeah. <laughs> Lee had... John Kennedy, you had Alan Jeans, Lee Matthews, and, and, and it went down the line and all those incredible messaging from, um, you know, playing the percentages. Lee was all about playing the percentages. What's our best chance to win? You know, if you do this, you're more of a chance to, to, to get success than, than doing that. Tell Acker to get to the front of Lynchy. Simple exactly. messaging, right? Simple messaging, coach. Yeah. Exactly. Simple messaging. So... I mean, if Lee was sitting on the couch here right now, I mean, you know what I love about it? The best way I can describe Lee Matthews, and when there's an AFL topic getting spent, spent, spent around the media in the AFL community for three or four days, how often Lee Matthew, Matthews gets on 3AW and he gives his opinion and all of a sudden it's just squashed. <laughs> it's amazing. Shit. Power of the man. Power of the man. Four-time premiership coach. 
Unbelievable. Underrated. That's it. A little bit. Um, I, I do have a, a small question. So we just saw the Brownlow, obviously, a couple of days ago with you know, someone who had over, was it 200 votes, I believe, in the Brownlow. What's your opinion on a one player getting over 40 votes in a season? Uh, it's extraordinary, yep. Um, I, I haven't been in Melbourne. I got down this afternoon, so I'm not really sure across the, the feedback of, of the last few days because of it. But, um, yeah, it, it's unprecedented. I mean, I think we, I think we, we saw, I remember Vossi, Vossi's um, my best teammate I've ever played with and one of the best players I've ever played. He won the Brownlow with 21 votes. Uh, I was fortunate to win with, I, don't, I, mean, I think Acker won it with maybe 23. I was 25. 45, 45 yes. is extraordinary. Yeah, it's Gav, a lot. Gav Wanganin won it on 18. Who won on 18? It's inflation. I think Gav, Gav, Gav Wanganin, Wanganin won it on 18. 18. Yeah. 18. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. So I think that's fair to say the last uh, you know, half a dozen years, a lot, you know, Lockie Neal, a lot, a lot of players have been getting more votes more regularly, and I, I don't know the answer for that. I cost mean, of living, I think. <laughs> cost of yeah. brown, brown inflation? Yeah. <laughs> that's right, yeah. So I, I, I'm getting a bit serious, aren't I? I need to yeah. lighten up a bit. But yeah. No, no, you're good, mate. It's, it's bloody amazing. There you go. <laughs> bloody amazing. All right. But what a player no, Cripper is. I mean, oh. Cripper's amazing. Yeah. 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 Off the footy topics, but uh, you also spent 42 days on Survivor. Didn't quite go the distance, which makes me feel a bit better about the conversation around Geelong and Brisbane this week. But talk about that experience, and I guess were there some of the, the skills and all, I guess, mindset approaches that you brought to footy that you were able to translate over to that environment as well? Yeah, yeah, Survivor was an amazing game um, to be a part of. I, I loved it. Um, I, I wasn't a, a super fan before I did it, but I, I, I watched several series and, and I, I loved the game. Um, Survivor, they want you to hurt. They want you to suffer. They, don't, they give you rations of rice and beans, sort of the size of your, of your, of your palm of your hands twice a day. And um, I, I lost nine or ten kilos in the 42 days that I was in the game. So they really want you to hurt. Uh, a absolute privilege to be able to partake in the, the challenges. There's a lot of carpenters that made those, make those amazing um, 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 challenges and the structures around it. Um, and the best thing about it for me that I love was living on an island. Uh, it, was, it was filmed in Fiji in 2019, our series, and, um, and just no technology. Like, no, no technology. The disconnect for a bit. Yeah, the disconnect. And, um, so Survivor, Survivor, for those that don't know, like, it's amazing, amazing in so many ways, but um, the, the, the last third of the game, the two tribes come together, the last 10 or 12 people in the tribe, and the really good Survivor players come to the fore in the la when the tribes merge. And... You know, the, the skullduggery that goes on and um, the gamesmanship that goes on. It's, you know, a lot of rats with gold teeth out there. That's the name of the game. And the strategic side of the game is what it's all about. But um, in short, love the experience. Uh, we'll do it all again tomorrow. And um, to come back and, and just, uh, or to have that experience, live on the beach with rations of rice and beans and, um, and, and, and partake in that experience was unreal. Official plug there. Uh, Survivor Australia said you'll do Australia. it all over again. Um, sorry, guys, I know you are trying to wrap it up. I do have one more question, um, particularly from my sister, Fiona. Uh, so I know you do... How is Fiona, by the way? Is she doing all right? Um, oh, she's no. great, Come mate, on, but she coach. does say, please respect, the res <laughs> please respect the restraining order and don't message her again, I believe. <laughs> um, but as far as someone who is, is an enthusiast for triathlons and marathons and that kind of stuff, how do you keep yourself in such ripping shape uh, post-AFL? Uh, thank you, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily. I don't agree with you. I'm not in great shape in terms of um, ripping shape. Ripping. No, look. I mean, I, I do bits. I mess around the gym. What do I do? Um, I've signed up to the Noosa Triathlon on the bike leg in about four weeks. But mate, I've got a I've got a bung knee. My ankle's no good. My, I've got Schumer's disease in my spine. Um, but your face will never change. When I go when I go to the gym, it's about just just you know just doing enough to get by. I think we all got to keep moving as we get older. Um, what do you think, Coach? You, you, you're, you're the mentor. What do you think? Well, look, let me tell you something about Blackie, right? Because I knew him back in Perth days. Carol Avenue, <laughs> Parry Ave up there through Corpus Christi. But Benny Cousins. Benny right? Cousins, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Blackie comes from Bull Creek Leeming Football Club, which is also the, where Ben Cousins came from. So it's, it's a melting pot that breeds championship players, resilient players, and I was there as these guys were coming through. And I told Blackie, I said, look, you're going to go fast, son. Keep the ethos. I remember calling Lethal up many years ago. I was like, look, there's this kid coming over. Right? Keep an eye on him. I know you're not there Brisbane yet, but when you get there, 
he's the one. He's the one. And uh, that's why he's been able to achieve what he has. Amazing player, amazing person. I'm looking, I'm going to miss Sunday. Normally we have a lock-in at the Royal Derby. We, we sing songs, we have a few beers. I'm going to miss you this year, mate. Mate, I'm going to miss you. Coach, coach is a man of many, many talents. He provides an amazing, uh, 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 well, I was going to say theatrical. There is a bit of theatrical about it, but his ability to be able to play guitar and sing and, and entertain is, is unprecedented. I've never, never seen anything like it. And uh, we've just come on the back of three years of 20-year reunions, and Coach has, has run each of them and made an amazing day of it. Um, We've had fun, haven't we? Get Vossi singing American Pie and yeah, Vossi loves and it, doesn't he? Flies up there. Last year we had Fly turn up after he had, win the flag and have a That's little right. baggy born the same day. The Can you imagine time. that? I'm singing there. I've got Vossi, the, the coach of Carlton here, and we've got Fly singing here, the coach of Collingwood, of course, the greatest coach in the middle. And I'm just pulling them together. Oh. We're singing American Pie. It's great fun. You're ready to ski. But I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you this year. I, I'm going to miss you too. I've got my parents. Yeah, my mum and my brother over from Perth. So I'm going to go back. But this man, this man, ladies and gentlemen, is an extremely talented man. He shouldn't be. He should be. Um, he should take over the next Bruce McAvaney. There. What you is go. going on? Thanks, mate. What Appreciate is going on here? Honestly, should. Should we pause the show and go in that room? Oh, it's there? just affection. It's just love for no, he's great recognizers great. You know? All right, we're going right, to pause the show for a little bit because thanks so much, Ben. Thank you so much, Paulie. We are going to say goodbye for now and we're going to introduce a couple of other guests who are going to take the stage. Thank you so much, Benny and Paul.